Hey, it's Hawken with Top Don. Today we're going to do a video on cloning a used module on a GM Global Electrical System vehicle. Uh, GM has Global A and Global B, uh, and those vehicles are basically not possible to use used modules in a bunch of those situations. Uh, so we're going to walk you through a bunch of different stuff uh, in the intro here before we show you the walkthrough on the tool. So in this particular video, we're going to clone a E39A module, and uh, let's get started here. So we'll walk you through the, uh, the basic prior to the actual process. So on the left here, you'll see a QR code. This QR code will take you to the last revision of the bulletin that I was able to locate that lists off a bunch of the GM global electrical system vehicles that generally cannot use used control units. Uh, now, the Top Don T-Ninja box, which is what we're going to use in this video combined with some other tools, uh, is what's going to allow us to use a used module in this situation where we normally cannot. Uh, so, the video is only going to cover one example out of all those different modules that are possible. Uh, your T-Ninja box coverage is going to be primarily ECM and TCM, so engine control module and transmission control module for the global electrical electrical system vehicles that GM makes. So there's your QR code to the TSB so you can take a look at that. What tools are we going to use in the video? Now I'll move my little bubble up in the top right here so you can see the QR code. So what tools are we going to use? In this video we're going to use the Top Don T-Ninja box. We're going to use one of the professional series scan tools which would include the Phoenix Max, the Phoenix Smart, the Phoenix Elite, uh, the Phoenix Lite 2, which is technically an intermediate tool, the Phoenix Plus, and uh, I believe that would be all of them, but we'll show you in the next slide. I've got pictures of all the tools. So uh, can do basically this process with any of them. You can also do it with the Phoenix Remote. Uh, we didn't list that one on here, but that is another one that is included in the list. You also need the MCU3 uh, it is an adapter plate. You need that for this particular vehicle as well. Uh, and we'll show you a picture of that in the next slide as well. What ECM are we going to clone in this particular video? Again, it's an E39A, and that is a General Motors ECM. Uh, this particular ECM from the donor vehicle and the uh, original vehicle are 2014-2015 era Chevy Malibu. Uh, the list of vehicles which this particular ECM can be found in is the QR code you see in the bottom right. So if you hit that QR code, you'll be able to see uh, kind of the larger, more comprehensive list that this video would really apply to. Uh, the process is probably going to be fairly similar for most of these modules, but again, this video is specifically for this. Um, for as far as what you need to be paying attention to during the process of finding a replacement module, uh, when you've got a module you need to replace, you need to look at the ECM or TCM and you're going to look for the identifier. Now again, we're just talking about ECM in this video, but you'll see in the identifier here that there is a E39A right here on the sticker, and then there's a serve or SERV service number. Uh, those have to match. Both of those two numbers have to match up identically from the original module to the donor module. So, once you have two modules that match those numbers up, then you will be able to walk through the process as we will show you in the video. The cloning process, just a few tips we'll talk about here briefly before we proceed to a couple other pieces of information that will be helpful to you. Uh, you want to save and back up the data that you pull from the original module. And you want to do that at least twice, if not three times. Uh, why are we doing this? We want to make sure that we don't have any corrupted data collected from the original module. So if you read it two or three times and save the file as version 1, 2, and 3, that way if you write the file to the donor module and it has some kind of corruption in the data, then you can rely on one of the other versions of the data you have pulled, which in all likelihood will not be corrupted. The other thing you want to make sure you do is name your files something readily identifiable so that you have easy time telling that that's from the original module, 
uh, or if for some reason you're backing up data from a donor module or anything of that nature, usually you'd want to do something like the last six of the VIN or maybe the complete VIN and then version one, two, or three. Just something to help you keep the files straight. So here's the tools that we're going to show you in the video. Uh, we're going to use the Phoenix Max in this particular video, but any of the tools in this picture and also the Phoenix Remote, which is not pictured here, will do this if you have the Top Don T Ninja box and the MCU3 adapter plate. So we'll go across the uh, list here so you can see. Top left, we have the Phoenix Lite 2. Middle, we have the Phoenix Plus. Uh, top right, we have the Phoenix Elite. Bottom left, we have the Phoenix Smart. Bottom center, Phoenix Max. Uh, right here, the white just above the T-Ninja box is the MCU3 adapter plate. That comes in a kit, which again, you do have to order separately from the T-Ninja box, and you will need that for this function. And then the T-Ninja box on the bottom right. And basically, you got to have the T-Ninja box, the MCU adapter plate, and then any of the scan tools pictured here or the Phoenix remote. Uh, any of those will do this function. Just wanted to walk you through those basics before we get into the process. Here's a picture of what our basic setup is going to look like here. And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll launch into the rest of the video where we will walk you through the step-by-step -step process we did in order to clone the original module to the donor module. So, let's get into it. All right, as promised, we're now going to take you through the steps that you'll see uh, and what you're going to do on the scan tool. Now remember, we're doing this on the Phoenix Max for this video, but this is the workflow is going to be basically the same on all of the tools that we showed you at the beginning of the video. So we're going to go ahead and play, and I'm just going to narrate for you so you can see what's happening. So we're going to go into the Services menu. We're going to scroll down until we find IMMO Prog. We're going to click on that. Then we're going to click OK. It's going to connect, excuse me, to the dongle. And then it's going to launch into the session. It's going to tell us we need to connect our T-Ninja box, which, as you can see here, we, we do. And we'll show you a picture of the overall setup. We're going to click on Engine, as this is an ECM. We're going to click on Delco. And then we're going to click on E39A, as that is the model we're going to work with. And you'll get this warning. you got to make sure you're connected properly. And now we're on the main screen. The first thing we're going to do is click on View Wiring Diagram. Now, throughout this entire process, it is absolutely crucial that you have good internet connection to your tool so that you can make sure that you pull the files down, uh, the wiring diagrams and whatnot. You want to make sure everything works like it's supposed to, and a strong internet connection is required for this. So make sure you do have that before you go proceeding through the process. So we're going to click the wiring diagram. The tool is going to download the wiring diagram, and it's going to show us a picture of what we need to do with the T-Ninja box. Now, if we look at the picture, it's going to show us there are some numbers here on the diagram. That is telling you which numbers on the cables of your T-Ninja box need to be connected to each of these pins. So you will just simply match the numbers up with the yellow harness on your T-Ninja box to these specific pins as it recommends using the uh, adapters that come with the T-Ninja box. Then I'll show you what it's going to look like here. So we'll pause just for a moment so I can pull the picture up. Now one thing I did not mention is the T-Ninja box also requires this MCU3 adapter, which you see over here connected to the T-Ninja box. Uh, so we see the T-Ninja box on the top right, the MCU V3 connected to the T-Ninja box, and then the breakout cable with the yellow cables coming off it uh, right connected to the MCU3. So then we are connecting all of those yellow cables uh, as they are numbered, just as the diagram showed us on the scan tool. You see here we've got the module, the original module, or excuse me, the donor module here on the bottom of the screen, and the original module we're going to read the data off of first and save at least twice, if not three times. Then here's a couple other pictures just showing you what the pinouts look like here, so we can see all the different pins are connected here. This is just a different angle, but the same pins are connected. And now we're going to go back to the other screen, so hold on. Okay, so we're back on the tool here. 
So you'll see what we got. So we're going to look at the wiring diagram and we'll scroll down here so you can see all of the uh, information it's going to show us. So here's the picture you can see. Here's the breakout cable with the 1 through 10 numbering, the MCU V3 in the center, just like we showed you in the real picture. Uh, the power adapter we're going to plug in directly to the MCU V3, and then the MCU V3 is going to be plugged into the T Ninja box. Now remember, the MCU V3 does not come standard with the T Ninja box, so we do need to make sure that we purchase that separately. Okay, so we're going to continue on here and we'll speed through it just a little bit. So now we're back on the main screen. The first thing we need to do is connect to the module. So we're going to go ahead and click on connect. Now one thing you will find from time to time is when it goes to do the secure login, if you don't have steady internet, uh, you may have issues with the secure login process. If this happens, just keep trying and it will eventually log in. Okay, so it shows connected. Now what we're going to do, the next step in the process, is going to be backing up the complete data file from the original module. Now this is assuming the original module is not bricked and is still functional. We will back up the data from the original module at least twice, if not three times, and we're going to save that file with a designation like V1, V2, and V3. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and you'll see the process here on the tool screen. So we clicked Backup Data. It's going to read the flash data. We're going to time lapse this because it does take a fair amount of time to both read and write the flash data. So make sure that you leave the tool undisturbed and don't screw around with it during this process. So we'll speed through it here. We'll time lapse it. You can see the counter on the screen recorder there for the approximate amount of time it's going to take us. All right, so it just finished right about there. We'll speed back just so you can see the end of it. So it took roughly 8 to 10 minutes or so to read it. After it does the reading, it's going to show you this message, and then it's going to give us the opportunity to save the file. Now, make sure you save the file and don't screw around, because if you back out of it at this step, it'll make you reread the file off the tool. Okay, so we're going to name the file, and we're going to give it a name that's distinctive that's going to let us remember which vehicle this came from, right? So the donor vehicle, usually if you, you can see we can make a really long file name, and by default it's going to save it by the date, but what we really want to do here is probably put in the original VIN number, or at least the last six of the VIN, so that we know that this is the original vehicle file. We want to know this is the original vehicle file, and we want to name it V1, V2, V3, each time we save a copy. Remember, we're going to back it up at least twice, if not three times. We're going to name it with, preferably, the VIN of the original vehicle whose module we need to copy. And then we're going to name it version 1, version 2, version 3 for each time we back it up, right? That way we have a immortalized good copy of the data, right? So we're going to do that. We're going to actually time lapse this a little bit, so just bear with me. I'm going to bypass this. Okay, so we picked a file name, and you can see on the screen here we have E39A full data, uh, version 2, ECM2. So I just named the original ECM ECM1 and the donor module ECM2. Then I named the files version 1, version 2, version 3, right? So that's how I did it, and then when it saves the backup, it'll say data backup succeeded. So now that we've saved the data, now we're going to restore the data after we connect to the donor module. So we're going to unplug the original module, which we have backed up the data from, two or three times and saved. Then we're going to use the same wiring diagram. We're going to click the connect button once we're connected to the donor module. Then we're going to restore the complete data file. So now we'll go through that process. Okay, so we're going to go find the file that we named that was from the original ECM. So remember, we said ECM1 was just what I named my file. So version 1 ECM1 is the file I chose to use, I believe, in this particular case. So we used ECM1 version 1. Remember, it's whatever file name you want to use, but something that helps you know what is the original vehicle ECM file and what is the donor ECM file. Uh, I always like to save the files off of both, just in case for any reason. 
Uh, but in this case, we're going to write the file from the original ECM that we backed up and saved, and we're now connected to the donor ECM. Again, same wiring diagram, same hookup process. So we're just disconnecting the original module we pulled the data off of. We're reconnecting to the donor module. We're going to click the connect button. We're going to follow the same wiring diagram. Then we're going to restore the data. And we're going to pick the file that we want to use. So ECM1, version 1, 2, or 3, whichever one you want to choose. But you're going to go ahead and do that. You have those three backed up copies in case the data was corrupted during the reading process. That way you can use a different file. The odds that it'll get corrupted three consecutive times is obviously very low. So now it's going to write the data to the donor ECM. So we'll look at that and see what that process looks like. Uh, we'll do a time lapse because, again, the writing process and the reading process can take a while. It took us roughly 8 to 10 minutes to read the data on this particular control unit. We're going to speed through this and we'll go back to the beginning. So we started about 16 minutes of screen record time here. And you can see it's taking significantly longer to write the data. So about 15, 20 minutes to write the data on this particular situation. So we'll go ahead and let it play. So we can see the data was successfully restored. Once we've completed the data restoration, at this point in time, we've got a couple of different options. We can go plug the ECM into the vehicle uh, that we needed the new module in and recheck everything, clear all the faults, uh, make sure you have a battery maintainer hooked up, clear all the faults, make sure the vehicle starts, make sure there's no fault codes in the ECM related to VIN mismatching or security or anything of that nature. And of course, if none of those faults come up, then we have successfully copied and cloned the data from the original module to the donor module. Uh, if we run into error codes or anything like that, uh, something suggesting that the calibration information or the data from the original ECM file that we wrote was corrupted or incorrect, then we want to hook up that donor module again and choose a different one of the backed up copies of data and restore the data again. So that's the steps you'd want to keep in mind if you run into issues in this process. So. We've successfully restored the data on this uh, ECM from the original module to the donor ECM. And now the module is ready for installation into the vehicle. Now, I didn't take any video of this, but we did hook this up to the vehicle and it worked fine. We did not have any fault codes related to uh, you know, security or VIN mismatch or calibration problems. And we were able to reprogram the ECM uh, to the latest calibration using the GM factory OEM TechLine Connect software and uh, the JBox, the J2534 that actually comes with the Phoenix Max MDCI. So uh, that was uh, actually pretty awesome. We were able to do all of that with the equipment we had, and uh, the vehicle was good to go down the road with this uh, new to it ECM but we were able to make use of a used ECM where in most cases the OEM is going to block that from being possible uh, as a result of the way their modules are designed on these global vehicles, uh, global electrical system vehicles per the TSB. So anyhow, uh, appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. It's The tool is very straightforward at uh, walking you through the steps and uh, you know just pay attention to those tips and tricks again making sure you're backing up the data from the original ECM or control unit multiple times and saving it with uh, version 1, 2, 3. And then when you write the data to the donor module, again, making sure that you plug it into the vehicle, clear all the faults, make sure you don't have VIN mismatch or calibration faults or security related faults, and that the vehicle will start and run normally. And of course, whatever reason you replaced the ECM for in the first place has been resolved. So, appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Hopefully you learned something uh, about how to use your T-Ninja box more effectively. We will have some more videos in the future on this uh, process, but the tool is very straightforward at helping you do this. Again, the T-Ninja box is a great place to get into this uh, subject matter area of cloning modules and get comfortable with it uh, as a at a beginner level. There are, uh, you know, obviously some deeper level 
stuff that you can do not only with the T Ninja box, but in this field as a whole related to EEPROM, MCU, advanced module functions. Again, keep in mind our training partners that we talked about at the beginning of the video. Uh, if you're in the professional automotive community, please take advantage of those training uh, partners of ours and uh, you know sign up for their classes. They make very good content, and I'm sure that they can teach you a lot more about this subject. So uh, anyhow, we'll go ahead and uh, wrap this video up for today. So again, I'm Hawken, and thanks again for watching this video on cloning the E39A control module or ECM on GM vehicles with your T-Ninja box, uh, the MCU V3, and any of the professional series tools that Top Don currently offers, as well as the Light 2.